okay, my record, recording starts. So I put on the record, record here. So please attend my lecture. I have only two or three lectures in the entire semester. Please attend on time or maybe one, two minutes before. I will start exactly on time, okay? So, so please be slightly before me because I have a lot of announcements maybe during the beginning of the <sighs> lecture. So if you attend, if you come enter late, you, you might miss it. Okay, so for those of you coming just a couple minutes late, please go to Moodle. Moodle, there's an attendance submission, attendance sheets for you to submit. Okay, just put in your name in the, in the content area to submit, okay, for a record. Okay, now let me switch back to the handouts here. Okay, uh, next three labs, we will do the, using the open channel, open channel apparatus, okay? It's open channel flow measurements, okay? There are three experiments in the, using that equipment. Okay, let me first show you what does the thing look like? I guess many of you already probably seen it before, right? So this is the open channel flow uh, generator, okay? Uh, it, it is in the ETL 120, okay? I think the civil engineering student probably already used this before. Uh, so it's a flume and then the, 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 there's a two pumps down there inside. So uh, circulate the entire duct with, with water, okay? So in the... Uh, in this apparatus, in the equipment, there are two uh, velocity measurement device, okay? There are two devices to measure velocity. So for the first lab here, we were going to do, for the first lab here, we were going to do, uh, just make sure, you know, it fully understand the flow in there. So we will measure velocities, okay? In, the, in this equipment, open channel equipment. Okay, so there are two uh, devices in the in the, in the in on the equipment to measure velocity. One is on the left. You see, in the left, there's a manometer here, left end, beginning of the channel. Okay, if you zoom in, it, it, it look like this. It's Figure three. Talk about this, talk about this velocity measurement apparatus. Okay, so basically, there's a, there's a two tubes there, two tubes. Uh, rela related to two manometers. One with uh, one actually the, 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 the velocity directly hitting it. So it will rise higher than the other one, which connected to the surface of the bottom of the channel, which velocity won't directly hit. So the difference between these two tubes, the reading of the difference between the water levels in these two tubes indicates the velocity uh, magnitude okay so you will i will you know in the video you will measure the the water level differences between the two tubes okay then there is a plot here okay the plot figure five in this handout actually it's it is actually on the machine you will see that that that, that pictures this is a plot to use to uh to, to, to calculate, to get the velocity based on the, the manometer readings. Remember, you measure the deflection between the two water surfaces, right? For example, it's 0.5 feet. So vertical axis of the plot is what you, whatever you read from the manometer, okay? The, the bottom axis is the CFS. What does CFS mean? Do you by chance know? CFS, cubic feet per second. That's the flow rate, okay? So be, be careful, the unit is CFS, cubic feet per second, okay? So, so there are two uh, lines there. It's a small orifice line and a large orifice line. For that experiment that we did, we use the large orifice. That's the opening for the channel, okay? So use this line, large orifice line. So if you get the reading 0.5 foot, okay? Go 0.5 foot horizontally reach to the line, large orifice, then go down, then you will see the, the flow rate, okay? That's how you use this plot to obtain 
the flow rate of the channel. Okay, does that make sense? I probably explained it, it in, also in the video, but, but here, I hope everybody know how to measure velocity here. Okay, uh, but, but the, the, notice this is a CFS. CFS is not velocity, right? It's cubic feet per second. Okay, how do you convert the cubic feet per second? It's flow rate, right? How do you convert that flow rate into velocity? I hope your fluid mechanics knowledge is still fresh. You know, most of you did it last semester with me, right? Or maybe before, okay? Or in the summer with somebody else. Okay, how, how do you convert flow rate into velocity, anybody? Divide by area. What area? The cross-section area? The cross-section area of the flow, okay? So let's come back to the first figure here in the handout, okay? Okay, this is the front view. It's, it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm inside view, okay, to, to the channel, okay? So notice in the channel, you have a gate, vertical gate, separate the, the channel into two parts, okay? The, the part in the left is the reservoir, which should have the higher elevation. Okay, the part in the right is the outlet stream, which has lower elevation, okay? Let me ask you a fundamental question. Is the flow rate the same before and the after the gate? It should be different. I shouldn't let you pass the fluid mechanic class. <laughs> What, what the heck? Conservation of mass, come on. Flow rate never change. That's the fundamental. Conservation of mass. Okay. You separate the channel by a gate. Okay. So the, the water elevation in the one side of the gate is higher than the other side of the gate, right? But the flow rate has to be same. Where does the flow go, right? Conservation of mass. Mass flow rate in equal to mass flow rate out. Okay, so the, remember that manometer measures the flow rate. Okay, so measure the flow rate. How can, can you calculate the velocities? You said uh, flow rate divided by the cross-sectional areas, right? So flow rate the same before and after the gate. So how about velocity? Wh which side has a higher velocity before or after the gate? Uh, before. Before the gate here, V0 will be higher velocity than V1? No, I'm after, sorry. Because of the after, nozzle. After. Yeah, V1 will be higher, right? You have a less area. You have the same flow rate, flow rate divided by cross-sectional area. So if your cross-sectional area is smaller, then your velocity is higher, okay? So, so, so you have, in this problem, you have two velocities inlet velocity or upstream velocity or down and the downstream velocities. Okay, both upstream and downstream has the same flow rate. So in the manometer, you measure the flow rate. Then you can calculate the two velocities. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. The goal for this experiment is to measure velocity. Okay, velocity measurement, open channel velocity. It's not open channel flow rate, okay? Be careful. The calculation you require to calculate the velocities. There are two velocities. Okay, so, so come back to the question, cross-sectional area. How do you measure cross-sectional area? Okay, the width of the channel is one foot, okay? The, the width doesn't change, right? The width is one foot. So, so the cross-sectional area of the flow is the width times the height of the water level. Is that right? Okay, I think I have a picture in the handout showing you actually we measure the height of the flow. Let me see, my computer is pretty slow. Right, here it is, see? Reservoir, the higher water level, we use a ruler to measure the height of the water, okay? The height is used to calculate the cross-sectional areas, 
Okay, I think this one is downstream, is low elevation. Okay, shallow water. Here is deeper water. Okay, so you measure the height times the, the width. Is that your cross sectional area? Okay, so you have two cross sectional areas. They, they indicate two velocities upstream and the downstream. What did you say the width was? One foot. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any questions? You are on your own after today, okay? Next week you will watch the video and you will do the lab report. So, so if you have any questions, I, I hope at the end of this hour, you are crystal clear what the experiment is, what are you going to measure and what you are, go are you going to calculate, okay? So that's the goal. Then I can save you time. Next time when you do the report, it won't take you too long, you know, try to figure out everything. Okay, you have, if you have questions, ask. I really like to ask questions, okay. Okay, so this is not the end of the story. Here, we, we, there's a two uh, uh, flow rate or velocity measurement device. This is the one, right, the manometer, the bigger manometer, that's one directly measures the flow rate. There's another device down there to directly measure the velocity, actually. Okay, here, at the downstream side, there's actually a stagnation tube, and then it's it's a just pressure tube. Okay, one tube connects to the bottom of the the, the channel, which face up, face to uh, the ceiling. Okay, so the water will bypass it vertically, so it won't feel any velocity effect. Okay, so in in one leg of the tube, it measures only pressure. Okay, and the other leg of the tube, the other tube connected, actually uh, the opening is facing the flow. It's not, not facing the ceiling, it's facing the flow. It faces the flow, okay? So the, the flow will directly hit the opening of the other tube, okay? So in that sense, the other tube will measure pressure plus velocity effect. They call the pressure head plus velocity head. Remember, in fluid mechanics, we talk about that, right? Stagnation tube. Okay, one tube measures the pressure head only. One tube measures the velocity head and the pressure head. So this one minus the other one will be velocity head only. So the deflection, the difference in the water level between the tube, between these two tubes, indicate the velocity head. Okay. So I assume you know what is velocity head, v squared over 2g, right? That's the velocity head, okay? So based on this measurement, the height difference between the two tubes, you can directly calculate the velocity at the downstream of the channel. Okay, is that clear to everybody? Okay, downstream of the channel only. Okay, so this one, you can directly measure the velocity on the downstream. Okay, so how about the velocity on the upstream? How can you calculate it based on this measurement? Based on this measure, the downstream velocity, can you calculate the upstream velocity? So this is the second set of the measurement. The first set is easy, I already explained it. You directly measure the flow rate. Then so you calculate the upstream and downstream velocities. That's it, that's the first set of measurement. This is the second set of measurement. Second set, you measure the downstream velocity only. Okay, then can you calculate the upstream velocity based on this measure the downstream velocity? Yes. Uh, because the flow rate is the same. Okay, you're a quick learner. You made a mistake, but now you learn it. <laughs> Cute. Okay, so yeah, that's correct. Because the flow rate is the same. So you with the up, downstream velocity, you can calculate the downstream flow rate by using velocity times the cross-sectional area, right? Cross-sectional area is just the water level. You can measure it, okay? So then the same flow rate divided by the upstream cross-sectional area, okay? 
then that will become your upstream velocity. Okay, these are the two sets of measurement. Okay, I hope you get a similar result. Okay, based on the reading. Okay, so that's the validation basically. That's why we use two sets of measurement to measure upstream and the downstream velocity. Okay, two sets of velocities you will have. Okay, that makes sense. Anybody? Everybody? Uh, that's not the end of the story either. Okay, you have two sets. You have a third, third set. <laughs> third set is actually from the theory. They are the theoretical equation I provide you based on the derivation from the textbook. Okay, so actually that's one of the problem in there. So you can actually, for the open channel setup like this, you can calculate the, the velocity. Notice this is the V1, it's the velocity downstream here. Okay, you can calculate the downstream velocity by equation one, okay, in the handout. So that's your, also your validation. So you have three sets of velocity. Okay, hold on. Uh, the three sets of velocity, then you can, you can, you can compare the three sets of velocity, okay, to, you know, make sure the velocity measurement is, is good, okay? So this is the entire first lab. The first lab, you will measure two sets of velocities from the two sets of equipment. Then comparing, to, comparing the measured velocities upstream and downstream to the theoretical calculation. Okay. Give me one second. Let me. Okay. Any questions? I want to be crystal clear. Okay. Before we, okay. Next week we will do this. Okay. How many of you here? 20. So next week you'll post a video for this lab and then this one will be due the following week. Is that That's correct? Right. That's right. You'll have one week to do it. I will post it uh, by the, the class time next week. Okay. So if you go to good, if you come to class uh, through four o'clock Wednesday afternoon, you should see that video. Okay. Okay, give me one second. Let me. Okay, now if you don't have any questions, let's move on to the second lab. Okay, second lab is more complicated, much more complicated than this, okay. Uh, but it, it requires the, the knowledge of this lab to, you, you require to use the velocity to do the calculation in the second lab. Okay, let me turn on the second lab handout. Hey, Dr. Zhang, after uh, this meeting, we're not gonna have to meet again with you online and we just do the labs and turn them in? That's right. You can keep communicate with me. Don't, don't worry about it. You can use the group me. You can uh, Zoom, Zoom meeting with me if you want to. Uh, but we don't have official lecture until four weeks from today. Okay, cool. After the three labs, we will have another one. Okay, another lecture uh, like this. Okay, so but I, I don't want to give you a lecture every week. You know, I you know we can combine all the lab together. I give you all the lectures. Then for the three four labs in a row, then you can do the lab. Okay. We have twenty nine of you in this room right now. Okay, I want you fully understand and fully understand on the same page. Okay, with me and uh, know how to do the labs. Okay, don't wasting your time to attending a class. Okay, that's my philosophy. Okay. Uh, next one. Force on the slow skate. 
that's actually one of the uh, example problem in fluid textbook. Okay, I don't know if we did this. I, I don't remember. Maybe we did. Maybe we're not. It's conservation of momentum. Okay, so basically the the setup is still like this. Okay, uh, this is a, a very common applications, especially in civil engineering, where you design a a dam, uh, a water control flood gate or something like that. So when you design a gate like this, you will need to know what kind of force this, this gate will experience, right? You, you want to design it, you want to make it strong enough to withhold, withstand the, all the flow, you know, all the waters, okay? It's tremendous amount of water, ha water has a strong, very strong forces, right? You know it. So you don't want the dam break. So you want to know when you're designing something like that, you want to know what kind of force, hydrostatic force it will, ex it's not hydrostatic, hydro it's what kind of force from the water, okay, it will experience. So, so before you design it, how, 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 how do you calculate it? Okay, I think that's the, the this, this, this example is in chapter six, conservation of momentum, you use uh, conservation of momentum principle to actually to calculate or to predict what kind of force uh, you will have on the gate, okay, from flowing water. So I, I give you the solution equation. Equation one is actually the theoretical solution from conservation of, of momentum. Actually, it's from the textbook, okay? So if you forget about it, go review it, okay? It's, 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 it's a very important topic. It's very practical, especially for civil engineers, very practical to you, okay? You, you need to know how to calculate the force, you know, in the flowing water. Okay, now, so what we're gonna do in this lab. So this is a calculated force from equation one, calculated from prediction, right, from the theory. Okay, you are going to actually measure the force on the gate. Okay, then to compare your measured force with the theoretically calculated force. Okay, so that's the goal of this uh, lab. <clears throat> so how do we measure the force on the gate? We use uh, manometers. Okay, again, the manometers. Let me see if I have a picture of that. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, figure four, okay, there's a set of manometers that connected to the wall, okay, okay, uh, you see the, in the background of the set of manometers, it's a ruler, okay, it tells you the, the distance between two points, okay, it's a ruler in the, in the back, okay, in the video it will be a little bit more clear than this. Uh, uh, each manometer has an opening on the gate. So water will enter the manometers. Okay, so you see, look at the tip of the manometer. It, it pointed to the different location of the gate from higher location to lower location, right? So basically it can measure pressure on the different locations on the gate. Okay, it can measure pressure. You cannot measure directly measure force, but you, you do measure, you do, you can measure the pressure. Okay, but you can measure pressure at different locations. So the question is, if you measure the pressure on those locations, how do you calculate the force on the entire gate? Okay, so that's a question. That's the heavy calculation here in this lab. Okay, uh, I have a, a, a illustration here in figure two of the gate. Okay, this is a much clearer image on the, uh, on the front surface of the gate, right? So, so the, these uh, orange colored points are the, the, the tip locations of the manometer. Basically the manometer reading, okay, uh, indicate the pressure on those dots. Okay, that makes sense, is that clear? I hope I'm not talking too fast. Okay, everybody follow me, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, in a minute, I will tell you how, how, how do you read the pressures. But now, assume you know the pressure on all those points, okay? Assume you know already know how, to, how what are the pressures here. So how do you convert into force? I think I, I separate them into small elements. Did you see that? Okay, in calculus, you know, if the element is small enough, we assume the value is the same on this element. Okay, we'll apply the same principle here. Okay, seems like the element is small, okay? 
the width doesn't matter. It's pressure is the same along the, 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 the horizontal direction, right? The only change is along vertical direction. So, so in this element, okay, since the height of the element is small, let's assume the pressure in this, on this element is the same. Okay, that's the assumption we have to make. Otherwise, there's no way we can actually measure the force, right? So, so if it's the same, pressure is the same. So the pressure on this dot, okay, represents the pressure on the entire element surface. Okay, so can you calculate the force on that small element? Not the entire plate, on this small element. It's shaded element, see, I, I, I put the element here, okay, on this, Target element. If you know the pressure on the on the orange dot, what is the force? Well, pressure is force over area, so the force would be times area. Yeah, pressure times area, right? Is that right? Does everybody remember? Okay. No, that's why we use this course. So the second time you learn this topic, it's a review, right? Everybody then, you know, at the end of the class, you really know the fluid, remember the fluids topic. Okay, so that, that's good, right? Uh, force on this element is the pressure you measure the times the area. Okay, so now can you find the force, forces on, on all those elements? Well, if you know the area of each element, sure, you can calculate the force on, on all those of these elements, okay? So how about the force on the entire plate? Do you just add them up? Right? Add the force on all the elements, okay? Add them together. That's the force on the entire gate. Okay, okay. Is that clear to everybody? It's a heavy calculation. This lab I have very, I think some of lab, maybe you only spend an hour or two hours to finish the lab and report everything. This one maybe take longer, okay? Longer than three hours to do it. So, so remember, but you need to fully understand before you actually do the calculation. Okay, so now, now come back to two questions. Do we? How, how do we calculate the pressure for, um, uh, from the manometer, right? The second question is, how, how do we calculate the area of each element? Okay, so area, the width, you know, is one foot, is the same, okay? So the only thing you need to know in order to calculate the area is the height of each element. Is that right? So how to calculate the height, you know, let me show back, show you the, the image back to the, the measurement here. Okay, okay, first of all, in the previous figure, there's a borderline between the elements. Now there's no borderline here, okay, on the actually, actual gate, actually device, okay. So, so how do you define the borderline? So, so let me say this, come back to this. If you know the location of your borderlines, if you know your vertical locations of the top border and the bottom border, can you calculate the distance, the height? You should, right? If you know the location, okay? For example, this is 1.1 foot in the bottom border and the 1.2 foot in the top border. So you know your height is 0.1 foot. Okay, it's not one inch, 0.1 foot. I, I said the point one, point two. okay. So, 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 hey, that's good, right? So now, now your task, your goal is to find the border locations. Okay, let me come back to this picture here. How the heck do you know the border location? I don't even have the border line on there, okay. So where is the border location? Sure, I have a ruler in the back. You have you you, you know the location if you know a, a point you want to see. You know, for example, the tip. The tip location is easy, right? You know, you can refer to your background ruler. You can find your tip locations. 
Okay, but the borderline, I, I don't need, a, do I need a typical location? Probably I need, but the most importantly, I need the borderline location. Okay, then the question is, how do you define the border? Okay, I think that the easiest way for you to define the border is the border is always in the middle of the two adjacent points to consecutive uh, dots, orange dots, locations, okay? You can define that. If the borderline is in the middle of these two consecutive locations, uh, orange dots, then if you know the location of the orange dots, then you know the borderline. It's um, half of these two locations, okay? That's exactly what the, the experiment here designed to see. The tip location you can actually measure, refer to the background ruler. You know where the location of those tips, okay? Then you should define your borderline in between and the calculate the location in between. Then based on the locations of the two borderlines, then you can find the, the, uh, the, 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 the height of the element, okay? Well, that's why I say it's very tedious and very heavily calculated problem. You have to spend some time. If you use Excel, it will be much, much easier. You can, you can automatically calculate it for you. If you hand calculate it, it's a heck of a job, okay? Then you solve the problem, right? You can find the area, area of each element. Then you can find the force of each element. Then you add them up. That's the overall force on the gate. Then you can compare to the calculate the theoretical force of the gate. Okay, is that good? Okay, that's the logic. Okay, whole picture here. That's why you attended today's class. It's, it's really not easy for the lab. Okay, then one more question here. Okay, H how do we find the pressure value on those tips? Okay, now you have a manometer. Okay, for example, uh, th this manometer. Okay, you have the tip location. Can you find the water level inside the tube? Sure. The water gonna, gonna rise in each tube, right? Okay, so you will have the surface level. Okay, background, the background, you share the same ruler. So you have the location for the surface of the water in the tube. You have the location of the tip of the tube. So the difference of these two locations, it can convert into pressure. Okay, so hold on for one, one second. Okay, let me talk to you. Okay. So any question, that's, that's the whole story. Measure the pressure, measure the small area, uh, calculate the force on the small area, then add all the force together. That's overall force. Can you repeat the last thing you said about um, the location of the surface level and the location of the tip of the tube? Is, is that how we calculate the pressure in the manometer? How high the water rises in the tube? Yes. Right, that's the pressure, gamma H, right? Volt GH, is that right? So basically you need the tip location, you need the water level location, that's H. Okay, is that good? Yes, sir, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, everybody, all 29 of you, we still have 29 or have, yeah, we still have 29. Okay, so this is one of the longest labs in the class. So be careful, there's a lot of calculation. Mathieu will, will check your calculation. Be careful if you make something wrong in the calculation, he will find it. Okay. Okay, so in the discussion part, I want you to discuss a little bit, uh, not only just calculate the force, but also some discussion did I present? Uh, yeah, it requires a lot of discussion. I, I, I think I didn't provide you a uh, velocity profile. Okay, I can, I, can, I can write it for you. Okay. Okay, let me stop this sharing. Uh, let me share my notes. Hold on, hold on.
this is not the one. Okay, this is my whiteboard. Let me open a new one. Okay. Do you, do you see my whiteboard? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm making a new document. Okay. This is actually a very interesting problem. You see, the velocity profile on the gate. It's very interesting. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you remember uh, in fluid mechanics, if, if, the, if the water is not moving, okay, it's, it's a stationary, what is the uh, uh, pressure looks like on the, on, the, on the surface, on the plate, if it's hydrostatic? So it looks like this, right? If the water is not moving, if it's hydrostatic, so the pressure only change with elevation. So the the deeper uh, location is uh, higher pressure it will be. Okay. If it's hydrostatics, the the force is much easier to calculate. Right. Remember chapter three in the fluids class, we we did the surface force calculation. It's just the average pressure times what times area. That's it. Okay. So it's much easier than the actual equation you see equation one in the handout. Okay because now it's moving, okay? So now you have a flow coming, okay? So what is the pressure distribution again on the surface, on the gate? Is that still straight line? I don't think so, right? but see, think about this, the flow hitting this and it stops here, okay? Then the flow actually go down here, near the bottom of the plate, and you feel more flows. Okay, in the top, it's just hitting there. Basically, it's stationary. You're not, not much of the moving fluid in the top of the surface you will, you will feel. Okay, but the bottom, since it's close to the, the, the outlet here, so the bottom of the surface, you will feel more of the velocities. Okay, so if you feel more of the velocity in the bottom half of the surface, is your pressure going to increase or pressure going to decrease? In other words, it is, does it look like this distribution or does it look like this distribution? So my question comparing to the hydrostatics in the bottom half, in the top half is anyway, you're going to have, you're going to see very small velocities. So, so it doesn't matter. It's similar. But in the bottom half, it, does it go this way or go that way for the pressure? In other words, is the bottom pressure higher than the hydrostatic or the bottom pressure is lower than the hydrostatic? Wouldn't it be the inverse of hydrostatic? That's right, you, uh, you answered correct again because it's inversely Bernoulli, right? Remember? Pressure and the velocity are inversely proportional, okay? If you have a higher velocity here, hydrostatic, you have no velocity, zero velocity. Now you, experience higher velocity, your pressure is going to be decreased, okay? So in the reality, in the, in the actual pressure distribution, you should find a pressure like this, comparing to this straight, okay? So since you measure the, the pressure everywhere on the, on the plate, you can actually use that measure the pressure to produce a plot like this, use Excel, to show the pressure distributions on the gate. You will see in the near the bottom of the gate, the pressure is lower, okay? Comparing to the theoretical calculated pressure, you can compare. This one you can actually calculate based on, basically pressure is just gamma H, right? So, so you can actually, Cloud calculate the pressure distribution on a hydrostatic uh, situation. Then you can compare the distribution in a in this actual situation, which is from the measured measurement. Your pressure is from the measurement. Okay, that's what I want you to show on your report. Okay, not only the value comparison from the calculated, uh, from the experiment and the, the theoretical calculation. Of course, you, you need to compare that, see if they're, they're close. Also, I want you to show that the pressure distribution is like this, 
Okay, the pressure you measured down here is actually kind of small. Okay, because it's close to the outlet, which has higher velocity. Okay, it's not very in the hydrostatic. If you put the manometer down here, it should have the higher pressure, highest pressure in the in the bottom. Here actually is not. Okay, it's a gradual change also. If you can produce a nice curve like this, that would be great. Okay, so the so this this is, this is the requirement on the report. Do the calculation, do the comparison of the calculation of the overall force, then discuss this pressure distribution compared to hydrostatic situation. Okay. Is that clear to everybody? This is actually a, a long a lab report, a long lab, long calculation, and the report will take long to do. Okay. At the time, the second week, we're going to do this. Uh, if you need more time, let me know. I can extend the due date for this one, but just for this one, because this one is kind of long. Okay. Everybody good? I, I only have 15 minutes left. I need to do the talk about the third lab. Let me know if you have other questions. Okay. Uh, third one is much, much simpler. Okay, third one. Let me open the lab handout. Share my screen. Okay, here we go. Did you see it? It says number nine, but it's actually number three. Okay, experiment number three. I, I switched the order because of the availability of the videos. Uh, so the hydraulic jumps, we didn't cover this in the fluids class, but I think many of the civil engineering students, you probably know this, hydraulic jumps. Okay, so for example, you go rafting, you know, in the Colorado, in a river, you know, suddenly the water rises. That's because of the bottom topography of the river changes suddenly, you know, then it can sometimes cause the weird situation like a hydraulic jump. Okay, so I, I give a, I think I have a drawing here. Okay, here we go. So uh, this is the actual situation when a hydraulic jump happens. Okay, it, it, it didn't draw long enough. At the end, we have a, uh, in the bottom of the, the, the channel, we have a tailgate, okay? The tailgate can go up and down. So it can block a flow a little bit, okay? So when you adjust the tailgate to a certain angle, the hydraulic jump will happen, okay? It, it, it won't happen all the time. It will happen only when it's very lucky. It's <laughs> very lucky situation, very, uh, you know, it's not gonna happen all the time. Sometimes it's just such a coincident and uh, some situation, everything satisfies, then hydraulic jump happens, okay? So in the experiment, I will adjust the tailgate, okay? To make the hydraulic jump uh, appear, okay? So when hydraulic jump, jump appear, that the set of the equation, actually that the theoretical in the textbook chapter, forget it, about chapter, 12 or 13 to talk about this. And there's actually a prediction of how high, how high the jump will go, okay? So Y1 is the water level before the jump and the Y2 is the water level, water depth uh, after the jump, okay? So, so the equation two here is a, a the theoretical prediction of how high Y2 will be, the jump will be, okay? Uh, Y1 is before the jump, it's just a regular water depths, you know, in the in a stream, in a river. Okay, if the jump happens, then Y2 can be calculated based on this equation too. And uh, in this equation too, there's a fluid number, FR, okay? Fluid number is indicated in the equation one. It's actually velocity, uh, which is the velocity, upstream velocity uh, divided by, uh, square root of g y upstream here because in equation two we use fluid number one means the upstream fluid number okay so you use the upstream velocity and the upstream y water depths to calculate the upstream uh, fluid number then use this fluid number 
substituted into equation two, you can calculate the downstream after the jump, how high the water will be, okay, Y2. So that's a goal, okay? So in the experiment, we, we make the jump. Actually, this experiment, so you're supposed to do it. When you do it, it's difficult part is to make the jump, okay? You adjust the tailgate, little bit by little bit, suddenly the jump appears, okay? If it's too much, then the jump disappear again, okay? It's just a, a certain condition it will happen. So usually when you do the lab, you know, you spend a lot of time on actually adjusting the tailgate, you know, <laughs> to make the jump. But now I, I did it for you. So uh, that, that video, that experiment won't be too long, okay? So, okay, that's one requirement is to measure. So measure the Y2 is easy. You just need a ruler, right? Y1, Y2, it's just a ruler. Then the measure the Y2 compared to the equation two, the calculated Y2. Okay, so that's one of the goals. The second goal is to uh, verify the energy loss. Okay, so equation equation two here, uh, I get it from the fluids textbook, is the theoretical equation of the head loss of a hydraulic jump. Okay, uh, is seems like it's pretty straight, pretty easy, basically is the, the Ys. Based on the elevation differences, you can actually calculate the loss of the hydraulic jump, okay? But in the experiment here, we can actually measure the energy loss. We measure the energy loss by measure the energy in before the jump and the energy after the jump. Okay, so the difference between the energy before and after the jumps, jump is, uh, is the loss. Okay, so I assume you will have a higher energy in the upstream of the jump, okay, then lower energy here in the downstream of the jump. The difference between the two energies is the loss. Okay, so we use Bernoulli equation. Basically, this is the Bernoulli equation in the head form, okay? Uh, we, we neglect the pressure because it's open surface, open surface flow, you know, it's the pressure, they are the same, right? So open to atmosphere. So elevation, head. You see, I use the flow rate here, okay? Flow rate, okay, this is the, what, this is the velocity head. Okay, you can convert it into, you know, see flow rate divided by cross-sectional area. That's velocity, right? That's V squared basically, okay. So, so flow rate you can measure from the manometer or you can directly find the both velocities from the first level, we know it, right? Either way, it's up to you, okay, to how to find. I think I, I, in the video, I just use a simpler way, use the downstream velocity you measure, then you calculate the velocities. Okay, so velocity head plus the elevation head upstream, then this is the velocity head plus the elevation head downstream. So the difference is the actual head loss for this particular hydraulic jump. Okay, so equation three is actually for the experiment measurement of the loss. loss you measure the energies before and after, okay? So the difference is the loss. Then equation two is from the theory, okay? So uh, the measured HL will be ca compared to the theoretical HL. So that's the second goal of this experiment. Okay, so I guess this one is much, much easier, right? The calculation wise, everything is much easier. So I guess, Okay, any question? I have six minutes here. I can entertain a couple of questions if you have any question to the, all the three labs. So quiet of you, huh? So it's good? Is that clear enough? Yes, sir, I think so. Okay, anyway, you have the three handouts in Moodle. Okay, you can, you can read it. Okay, this, this handout is actually 
is created by my former students, but my, and maybe have some uh, typos, grammar errors, whatever. But the, the, the content is there, okay? And uh, you can find all the major information there, okay? So uh, if you need more details, let me know. If you have more detailed questions, let me know, okay? I, I will more than happy to answer for you. Okay, so individual lab reports, okay, it's not group lab report, please don't copy each other, I can tell, okay, easily, uh, uh, please, okay, what kind, it's not difficult, if you have difficulty, let me know, I, I help you, okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you don't have questions, that's it, my timing is perfect, 4.55, okay, so, uh, next week you will see the video. If you go to the go to Moodle uh, during the class time, it should be there. Okay, for both Thursday and the Wednesday's class. Okay, so have a good evening. See you later. Professor, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you. You are professor. Yes, yes. Who's who's? This is uh Jerry and Carmier. So I'm I'm trying to uh just make sure. So when are the uh when would you like us to turn in the lab reports? Was oh, okay. Next? I will post the video, lab video next week during the class time, okay? So your due date will be one week later, one week after I post the video, okay? So I will specify the due date on the Moodle uh, submission site. You will see exactly what time. You, you should be 11.59 of that day. 11.59, midnight of that day. So you will have actually that day also included uh, for you to do the lab report. Okay, yeah, I was uh, just making sure, thank you. You're welcome, very welcome. Okay, see you later.